Have you ever wondered why is it that you see on the internet people making thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, 100%, 200% in the markets, forex, stocks, crypto, but when you do it, you don't get the same result and you lose money. Now, in this video, I'll disclose every single thing. You'll be the total truth and you'll start to understand how to make money and why is it you don't seem to be able to make money like those that you see on the internet. Hey, Next Level Investors and Traders, this video is going to be one of the most important video disclosing why is it a lot of people are making money but it seems that some of us are not able to do the same. It's because the way that we measure the performance and measure the risk very differently. Warren Buffett has a rule. Rule number one, never lose money. And this is a very important statement which a lot of people do not understand. That's why this video is one of the most important yet it can be one of the most boring. I'll be going through four very important metrics for you to measure true performance of your trading and investment performance. You'll know exactly where you stand in terms of your investing skills. And because this video may be a bit technical and boring, I'll be adding some irrelevant jokes here to keep you guys awake. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the most important things for investors and traders. The reason why I'm motivated to create this video it's because recent times I've been seeing people posting things like I've made 125% in NVIDIA, my ETF gone up by 70%, gone up by 90%. Now, these are all very simple to do. For those who have been investing for a while in the stock market, you realize one or two of your positions can go up by 100%, 200%. But what we want to know is whether the entire portfolio, when we utilize it, can it go up by that kind of percentage? So let me give you an example. Here you can see my portfolio and this is a live real money portfolio. Example, my Tesla combo has gone up by 87%. Uh, Meta has gone up by 37%. But so what? It doesn't mean that my whole entire portfolio is up by 80 over percent. What it means is a position there has gone up. You can see some losses as well. Example, the value of a call that I've written has gone down by 58% and it doesn't affect my portfolio as much as you think. What is important is when you take a look at the whole entire portfolio's performance, it is up by 59.35%. But even then, is it really a good performance? The first performance measure I would like to introduce to you is called the alpha. Alpha is the measure of outperformance of a particular benchmark. So for most investors, we like to benchmark ourselves against the S&P 500 or whichever index that you like to benchmark. In most brokerages, besides showing you your rate of return that year, they can also show you how does it compare against a benchmark. I'm going to put S&P 500. And you can see year to date, S&P has gone up by 14.79%, but my portfolio has gone up by 55.50%. So the alpha in this particular example is 55 minus about 15%. That's a 40% point of alpha. In fact, this is how you should measure the performance of your funds that you have bought from your friends, people who sold you unit trust, investment from bankers. Some of them may be pretty good funds. At the same time, we must look at the alpha. So for example, let's go to BlackRock and look at some of their performances of their fund. I'm going to choose their first fund in line, which is the Equity Income Fund. And every single website of the funds, they will show the fund performance. <clears throat> Clicking through here, you can see that since inception, the total returns is 4.09%. Well, we don't really need to compare to S&P 500 because by all measures, we can see that it isn't really a very strong returns. Just for your information, if you buy into SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, the performance for the past 10 years, compounded annual growth rate is about 12.71% depending on when you measure it. Let's take a look at another fund. Fidelity is one of the biggest fund providers in Singapore as well. We can see from the website, they give us a three years annualized returns. I should use that. Scrolling down, we can see this fast global fund is making good returns, 12.39 annualized returns. But do take note, there is a 5% sales charge. So the total returns is only 10.49. If you bought into S&P 500, again, it will be 12.71 for the past 10 years. For the past five years, 14.83. And if you look at one year, it's 24.75. Comparing to the one year returns, it is 29.9, but after sales charge is 23.40. So there isn't really an alpha. Alpha is negative because we take 23.40 minus 24.75. In fact, it's a negative alpha of 1%. Let's also take a look at Endowers Fund. We can see the annualized return for the past 10 years is 
Whereas again, S&P is 12.71, so it's a negative alpha. I'm not saying that these funds are lousy because we do need to take note of other aspects like the drawdown, the volatility, the ease of investing as well. However, if you want to manage your own investment, you realize that you can invest simply into S&P 500 ETF and beat most of the funds because most of them has zero or negative alpha. Let's move on before some of these funds write negative comments on my videos. Now, here's a joke. Why did the bank teller push the woman? Because she asked to check her balance. Pretty bad joke. Now, besides just looking at the alpha of the fund, I would like you to look at the second portion, which is called the Sharp Ratio. It's created by William Sharp, an economist, Nobel Prize winner, who has created this formula to show the true performance of a particular fund. In fact, a lot of the funds are using this ratio to measure how steady this fund is in terms of creating returns at the same time, not too much fluctuation. Now, let me explain how the Sharp Ratio is being calculated and you'll understand why Sharp Ratio is a better performance indicator. You can see here, Sharp Ratio measures the risk-adjusted return. Keyword, risk-adjusted. When you look at the calculation, Sharp Ratio uses the return of the portfolio, meaning you say how much your portfolio is making, minus the risk-free rate. Example, treasury bonds. This will give you what they call the true returns because you could have put your money inside the bonds and get a particular safe rate. So it's almost like taking the alpha of this fund compared to a risk-free rate. And you can see they divided this by the standard deviation. So let me just explain to you what standard deviation is. So example, every month, this is our returns, 2%, 3%, minus one, four, and zero. First, we will calculate the average return per month. Taking the five months returns, we're gonna add them together, divided by five. That's where we get the mean, which is the average of five months returns. In this particular example, the average is 1.6% per month. The next step we calculate is every single month's return compared to the mean. So we take every month's return, example, in January, we make 2%, we're gonna minus 1.6% from it. So we know how much every month's returns fluctuate from the average. The amount that it fluctuates from the average is what we call the variance. We take the square root of the variance, we get this thing called standard deviation. How does this really help us as investor? Now let me explain to you why standard deviation is important. Because when we talk about average returns, we have to understand average doesn't give you the full picture. Example, let's say we are waiting for the bus and they say that the average traveling time is 30 minutes. You look at the clock and you say 30 minutes is enough time for me to get to my destination. But when you understand that the standard deviation is about 50%, meaning you say sometimes it will be 30 minutes, sometimes it may be as long as 45 minutes, and sometimes it's as fast as 15 minutes. That's where it tells a different picture. If you are someone who is risk adverse, you know you need 45 minutes of travel time to have a higher chance of reaching your destination on time. So as you can see, Sharp Ratio considers the variance and the standard deviation to say that even though this portfolio is making money compared to the benchmark, the alpha is good. However, we don't want it to fluctuate too much. It should give me a steady state of return. So with that in mind, for Sharp Ratio, typically if it's below one, it's considered bad. Meaning you say we are taking a lot of risk to get the additional returns. If it's more than one, it's good. More than two, it's very good. And more than three, it's excellent. Now, how do we see Sharp Ratio in our brokerage. I'm going to use the example of IBKR. You can go to Performance and Reports, click on Portfolio Analyst, and right here, you can see the various risk measure performance. Zooming in here, you can see this button called Configure Dashboard. That's where, for us, we can add in this thing called Risk Measure. Remember to save it, and that's where you can scroll down and see this thing called Risk Measures. Click on it, they will show you how your portfolio is really performing. There are some lucky investors, sometimes we make a lot, we lose a lot. And today, maybe I'm just showing you how much I make. But many investors, especially in my earlier years, they do not show us how much they have lost. So sharp ratio will give you a more complete picture. You can see this is a fund performance and VAMI means Value Added Money Index. If you put $1,000 a month, how much will it be right now? The index is 1593, meaning you say $1,000 put into this particular portfolio who have gained you an additional $593. The maximum drawdown is 5.81%. You can see initially, the portfolio went down to about 900 plus. It took three days to recover and the sharp ratio currently is 3.19. This is something that I personally like because I do not like my portfolio to fluctuate a lot. In the past, I've shared strategies which have given very high returns. However, the drawdown is extremely high as well. Sometimes we can see our portfolio goes down by even 70% and I realize most investors could not take this kind of fluctuation. 
So as you formulate your strategy and create a portfolio, remember to look at the Sharpe ratio to make sure you are taking adequate risk management. So I was checking the Sharpe ratio for Vanguard and you can see the Sharpe ratio is 2.18%, which is a very good ratio. Meaning to say they are helping us grow our money and getting the alpha, at the same time, the alpha is two times more than the fluctuation. In my opinion, that's pretty decent. Before we go on to the next ratio, here's a joke. Why did a stock trader bring a ladder to work? I got a feeling this is going to be really bad. Because he heard the market was going up. Well, you see, this is my strategy to tell really bad jokes so that the technical aspects of it actually seems better. Now the next one, Sortino Ratio. Now Sortino Ratio is very similar to Sharpe Ratio. The only difference is they only measure standard deviation of the downside. So initially, when we talk about standard deviation, we measure how much fluctuation it is from the average. That's where we calculate the variance of the portfolio. But right now, we only calculate variance of the portfolio when it's at the downside. So this is used for investors who say, well, if it goes up, it doesn't matter. I'm interested when it goes down, how much it goes down. The calculation is pretty much the same. So we only take into account of months that are losing. Personally, I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't mind my portfolio going up and breaking the variance going a lot higher. But I don't want to see it go down by 60, 70, 80%. Most of us do not want to. So a good Sortino ratio is two and above. Again, if you have IBKR, based on the risk measure, the Sortino ratio is already calculated for us just below the Sharpe ratio. In this case, my portfolio, you can see that I'm very focused on risk management. Therefore, my Sortino ratio is 6.19, way above the benchmark of two. Before I go to the last ratio, let's talk about another bad joke. What do you call an investor who is always right? Hmm, sounds like my wife or my mom. Okay, the answer is it's a myth. Well, if my mom invests and my wife invests, they will always be right, even though we don't make money sometimes. Anyway, the last ratio is called the Omega Ratio, and this ratio is known to be a lot more comprehensive. It measures the likelihood of an investment returning more than a threshold. When we talk about threshold, it can be like 3%, 4%, 5%. So example, if let's say you are aiming for 5% or 10% benchmark, 10% is pretty high though, you can actually use the Omega Ratio to see based on your current portfolio performance, how likely are you to outperform this threshold. The calculation is here, but I'll not go through too much in depth because right now we have this thing called ChatGPT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of my portfolio and go into ChatGPT asking them to measure my Omega Ratio. Can you help me calculate the Omega Ratio with a threshold of 10%? Now I'm aiming for 10%, it's pretty high. Let's see how it performs. All right, they have analyzed and calculated based on the monthly returns, and you can see that the Omega ratio is 34 with a threshold of 10%. What it means is the probability of beating a 10% benchmark is 34. Is 34 actually good? Let's take a look. Now we can see the guideline for a good Omega ratio. Interpretation, if the Omega ratio is more than one, it indicates expected gains above the threshold is greater than expected losses. So one is considered acceptable. Anything that's more than two is considered good. So in this case, 34 means that it is extremely high chance that the portfolio can be more than 10%. Now, if you read further, it says that a conservative portfolio may have an omega around 1.5 to 2, and an aggressive one has an omega ratio 2.5 and above. So it's important to use different ratios and combine them together. Because if you look at my portfolio, the omega ratio is 34, making it sounds like a very aggressive portfolio. At the same time, the Sortino and the Sharpe ratio, it's pretty high as well. It means that the variance or the drawdown, it's very acceptable. So remember to use all this to make sure that you know your true performance of your portfolio. Using Sharpe ratio and Sortino ratio to measure the variance and standard deviation, how much it fluctuates. And finally, the Omega ratio, the probability it can cross a particular threshold. So no longer do I want you to be blinded by the fact when you see someone making a 90%, 100%, a 200%, that may be only one position in their whole entire portfolio. Ask for the total returns of the portfolio, ask for the alpha, the sharp ratio, Sortino ratio, and also Omega ratio. If they don't even know what it means, very likely they are not actual investors. Let me know if you want to learn more about investing and what questions you have by commenting below. And remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the notification button so that we can learn more about investing together. Before I end, let's end off with a good joke that ChatGPT will provide us. Why did the stock market invest in internet? Because it wanted to get online returns. 
is this some Gen Alpha joke or is it just me? Let me know whether these jokes are good because I just don't get it. I'll see you in the next video.